This guy had a, let's say, a okay first half and then a okay second half, but then he scored too. Can you imagine? Nadat Frankrijk zich knap herstelde van een achterstand tegen Australië, om vervolgens korte metten te maken met de Socceroos, was het ditmaal de beurt aan Denemarken. Het team van Christian Eriksen moest iets bedenken tegen het sterrenensemble van Didier Deschamps. Maar de Fransen trokken uiteindelijk toch aan het langste eind. Goalverslaggever David Koefi volgt Lebleu en was bij die wedstrijd. I was on the edge of my seat from the beginning till the end. It was absolutely insane the pressure, the atmosphere, the everything. With a bit of discipline, France can go all the way. I'm telling you. The opinions in France after seeing those two games is that Mbappe is going to be the best player in this World Cup. That's the opinion. Man, this guy had a let's say a okay first half and then a okay second half, but then he scored two. Can you imagine Mbappe in a bad game can score two goals? So what does it say about the time that he's going to be great during the first half and second half? He's going to say that he's going to be the best scorer, maybe even the best in assist. Is going to be the best player. Is going to bring a second World Cup to the nation. De blessure voor Benzema leek een enorme mokerslag te zijn voor de Fransen, maar momenteel lijken ze alles behalve van slag. Yes, we're still talking about Benzema because people were trying to say, oh, it's a relief for the bench and for the squad that Benzema is not here no more. They feel less pressure. That's false. They know that they're missing something and that when they're on the pitch, they're fighting for Benzema as well. Benzema is still here with us and we still care about him. And the fact that people don't talk about Benzema shows as well the squad depth that we have with Coman coming out of the bench, we got Thuram coming out of the bench, we got anyone coming out of the bench. Koefi ziet twee spelers uitblinken bij de regerend wereldkampioen. Antoine Griezmann. Antoine Griezmann taking both corners, he's defending, he's passing, he's assisting, he's doing everything all around the pitch. I hope he's going to rest for the last game because he deserves it. And Adrien Rabiot has been fantastic. Chouameni has been fantastic as well. But honestly, yeah, one of the key players. Oh, Theo Hernandez as well. Theo Hernandez, you know, Lucas got injured and he got his brother back. He got the Hernandez family on his back. Frankrijk ziet er sterk uit en is misschien wel de grote titelfavoriet. Ondanks de kritieken die bondscoach DJ Deschamps voorafgaand aan dit WK kreeg. They love criticizing the coach. But Deschamps, as of now, has never, ever, ever, ever failed us in anything. Every decision that he's taken has brought us to the top. Deschamps is the man. We call him Le Grand Didier Deschamps because he's the only one who wants trophies for France, for Marseille, for anyone. Weakness of France, honestly, could be uh, the lack of experience in the midfield because the competition so far has been okay. It's been all right with the midfield, but you never know. You never know how an inexperienced player can handle pressure. You can only discover it when the pressure is there. And honestly, we'll see what the midfield is capable of. Defensively, we're there already. It's nice. Offensively, they've been there. They've been doing it. They won it. But the midfield, very, very young. With Chouameni, with Fofana, with everyone. Like it's, uh, it's still a process. But the process is going well so far. So to me, the teams that that gave a good impression in the first one. Brazil. But to me, yeah, Brazil could be the one that's very, very, very complicated to be because to me in this World Cup, there's only two nations that showed up, France and Brazil.